Okay, this is question seven from M1 October 2022. Uh, you'll see that what I've done to just make the video a bit shorter is I've already drawn the diagram out below. Um, this is a standard sort of connected particles question, but what they do uh, do with this one is there's a lots of algebra involved in it. So uh, let's crack on and make a start. So it says we've got a particle P of mass M attached to one end of a lightning extensible string. Another particle Q also of mass M is attached to the string. Passes over a pulley, um, fix a rough horizontal table, that's important. Particles held at rest, P hangs vertically below. And then the usual stuff, particles, uh, the P, Q and the pulley all lie in the same vertical plane. Coefficient of friction is mu. Okay, I'll put that on in a minute. It says particle Q is released from rest. And then this is the slight difference. It tells me that the tension in the string is kmg rather than just being t. And it says find k in terms of mu. So straight away, I know there's going to be a lot of algebra involved. Let's get started. First thing I do is put my forces on. So they told me this was a mass of m. We always have a reaction force anytime we have an object on a plane. Uh, the, the acceleration or the movement is going to be in this direction. Always useful to put this on. It helps me when I'm doing my F equals MA. It's going to be going in that direction. And if it's going in that direction, then there will be a frictional force. Frictional force always opposes motion. That's why the rough table was uh, important. So think, finish with my foot. No, I haven't. I've also got to put my tension on here. Sorry. I'm going to do it as T to start off with simply because that's what I'm used to doing with all the other questions that we ever have with this. And then going to P, if I've got that situation, that's going to be MG. Now, I hope for most of you, that's actually fairly standard and straightforward to do. Um, what I will do here is just also put that that's equal to KMG. And I'm also going to put that that's equal to KMG. Now, there's nothing to stop you putting KMG straight away on this especially if you're fairly confident. But for those of you that find these questions a little bit more difficult, maybe having mg minus t and t minus mg later on, uh, it's more, more um, familiar to you to actually see it in that format first. I think I've got all my forces there. So what do I need to do? I'm trying to find k in terms of mu. I've got to through, go through my normal procedures. So my normal procedures, I always consider that one first to do F equals MA because it's a little bit simpler than the other side. So I need to tell the examiner what I'm doing. This is part A. So I'm going to say consider P. So the examiner now knows where I'm looking on my diagram. I'm going to resolve vertically. I always put in F equals MA. So in this case, what have I got? Well, I've got that it's going in that direction which means mg must be bigger than t. And so at this stage, you've got a choice. You can write mg minus t equals ma, if that's more familiar to you, but then straight away change that to mg minus kmg equals ma. I can get rid of the m's, but I'm not going to yet. I know that from my standard sort of questions like these, that's one of my equations of motion. I now want to do the same thing for the Q. I'm going to get F equals MA there. I've just got to take into account that there's friction and all sorts of business going on with Q. Let's do Q. If I'm going to consider Q, I always do these in the same way. First of all, I'm going to resolve vertically there. It's just going to be R equals MG. I'm then going to remember that F equals mu R. So I'll get F. And I'll then after that finally do F equals MA in that direction, and that will be my second equation of motion. Let's do what I've just said. So, resolve vertically, first of all, for Q. Let's say I generally tend to write down F equals MA every time. Probably a bit overkill, but um, doing that, we then get R equals MG. No other forces acting there. I always jump straight in with F equals mu R next which is going to give me F equals, in this case, mu mg. Now, both of those two were so that I could now resolve horizontally. And when I'm resolving horizontally, let's go back and have a look at it, but it's a really, really straightforward one. Well, I'm doing um, F equals ma in this direction then, 
Which way is it going? It's going to the left, which means T must be bigger than my F force. Okay, so if T is bigger than my F force, I'm going to get T minus F equals MA. But now again, remember, we know that T is kmg. We know that F is mu mg is equal to mass times acceleration. So this is where, if you've done lots of them now, you're really useful to getting these two ideas, these two equations of motion. And then what I normally do is I put them together get uh, to work out my acceleration. And then from my acceleration, I can work out my tension. So we're going to do something similar. Um, I'll put the equation number one again underneath equation number two here. And this is all about practice, guys. If you have practiced these, we know what the next step is. The next step is to add the two of them together because then my, in, in normal questions, my T cancels. Here, my KMG will cancel and I'll be able to work out what acceleration is. Once I've got acceleration, I can just put it back into probably number one and get um, some relationship between K and mu, whatever it is that I need. So in this particular case, I'm saying one plus two there. So one plus two gives me mg minus mu mg is equal to two ma. The very first time you did that, that might cause you problems, but now this should be relatively straightforward, except for the fact that obviously there's a lot of algebra in there. Cancel out the m's. You could have done that any stage you wanted to. This is just when I'm choosing to do it for myself this time. And just tidying this up now, I've got G minus mu G is equal to 2A. So I can take the G out, which gives me 1 minus mu. And I'll, I can also divide it by 2, can't I? So I've now got an expression for A. Is that what I wanted? No, I knew from the original question, I actually want K in terms of mu. But now all I'm going to do is I'm going to put that back into this equation and then uh, that's how we'll get it. Let's just do that then. So once I've got that, um, sub this into equation two, just telling the examiner what I'm doing, just in case I do make any mistakes at any stage. So kmg minus mu mg is equal to ma, that's uh, equation two. I know the m's, we'd cancelled them already, but I'm, I'm just making it, I don't wanna make any silly mistakes, so going slowly, but step by step, helps me to make sure I don't do anything algebraically silly. So what have I got here? I've got kg minus mu g is equal to a, and a is g over two, one minus mu. So all I've gotta do now is to rearrange that. First of all, get rid of the G's. And then I'm gonna get K equals there. I've got one minus mu over two, and I'm just gonna take this thing over to the other side. So that'll be plus mu, which is gonna give me K equals one plus mu over two. So it took a little bit of time to get there, but you know, you, you've gotta make a value judgment when you're going through doing these papers. That's worth seven marks. I haven't made any mistakes with it. Um, some sort of irritating algebra, if nothing else. And uh, I'm happy to have got an answer. Would have been nice, I think, for them to have actually said, show it's equal to something, but they didn't. So, yeah, that's part A done. Right. Given that Q is initially a distance D from the pulley, straight away, experienced uh, mathematician should be saying this is going to be a SUVAT question, isn't it? So um, D is a distance, sorry, it's a distance D from the pulley. Find in terms of D, G and mu, the time taken to reach the pulley. So this is unusual. They normally say that it doesn't hit the pulley, but okay, it's gonna go all the way along to reach the pulley. And what are we trying to do? Find uh, the time taken. So I want T, so for part B, this is Suva. Let's have a look and see what we've got. So they've told me D. Always be on the lookout for U being equal to naught. It's a, it started off at rest. Um, T is what I'm looking for. I know I've got the acceleration because that was uh, a bit that I worked out in the first part. 
And so as always, what I really want with the Suvac question is I've got four of them. Uh, one, two, three, four. And out of those four, I've got three and I'm looking for the other one. V, not interested in. So I just put a dash there to make it easier for myself. What have I got? S, U, A, and T. So I'm treating you as though you know what you're doing with these sorts of questions. S, U, A, and T has to be that one out of the formula. Let's just put everything in. So S is equal to D. U is equal to naught, so that's helpful because it means that all of that's gonna go. So I'm gonna get naught plus the acceleration, which was G over two, one minus mu. Because it's G over two, um, it's half of that, it's gonna be G over four. T squared, and they say, okay, right, all I've gotta do with this is rearrange to make t equals it's going to be some square root sort of business going on um let's just tidy this up over here i'm going to get t squared is equal to right i can take the four over the other side 4d and i can take the g over g1 minus mu over the other side and get that you might need to stop the video and have a look at that hopefully you don't that's, that's straightforward to you so if that's true then T is going to be the square root of 4D over G1 minus mu. Uh, well, are we trying to prove it or no? Again, so not very nicely. They could have, for one of those, they could have said show it's equal to something. It's almost impossible to cheat with it. But anyway, yep, that, that's the answer to part B. And then part C. Part C scares me as a teacher because it's one of those things where you think, did I go back and tell everybody what's going on with this? Do people understand what mu actually means? Okay, so mu is the coefficient of friction. What does that mean? The coefficient of friction, I explain it to students in my class, is that it's basically how stickable something, or how sticky something is. So if there's a lot of friction, if you've got like a rubber mat and um, rough tires or something like that, then there's going to be a lot of friction there. Mu is going to be as close as possible to one. If you had a really smooth surface, like an ice skating rink or um, something, uh, you know, these trains that fly, they don't fly, these trains that are, are on air, there the coefficient of friction is virtually zero. And it says, if mu is greater than or equal to one, what would happen? Well, if mu is equal to one, pretty much it's stuck. It doesn't move. So that's all they're actually asking you to say in your own words. If mu is greater than or equal to one, uh, then there'd be no motion. Nothing would move. Be no motion. You might want to have a look at the answer scheme to see the various different other bits and pieces that they could put for that. But that should suffice, I think, for the marks. Okay, hopefully that makes sense to you all.